again um, for uh, having the possibility to show this film here and, um, and that you really found time to join us here. Um, maybe, maybe I could start a little bit more general um, to talk about your work and so we have time to, to get down <laughs> from this film. Um, I think it's obvious that you are that you are deeply connected to to, to your country. And um, after the films that I saw, which are I think the last four films of you, um, I think what is really um, interesting is your look on on the characters you talk about, which is in my eyes really patient and in a way full of love for the characters with the result that you don't only tell something about these people you talk about but about human beings in general and um, and that's what, what I was thinking about is um, I think I saw you I heard you in an interview saying that you love Turkey and um, and I would never be able to say to love Germany so um, I wondered about what is the difference I and mean, could you tell us something about the relationship to your country and what does that mean for your work um, I don't know it's a difficult question actually uh, of course as a filmmaker uh, the, the, the details of the culture is our words, our language, so uh, we need them for uh, filmmaking. And I think uh, I cannot make, it's very difficult for me to make a film outside because I don't really know the deeply the details of the culture. I mean, when I look at somebody, uh, I really cannot understand the whole story. But in Turkey, uh, even the minor detail tells me everything. Which part of Turkey is from, from the language, from the uh, hairstyle, of the clothes, everything. I can understand everything. So I use them in the filmmaking. So that's why uh, I need Turkey. And uh, of course, uh, that doesn't mean that I, I don't find Turkey a very special place. Uh, uh, finally, I believe that uh, all the humanity is quite similar. You know, everybody uh, is quite quite the same. Of course, the, there are some characteristics of Turkish people. Maybe they are for more friendly. It's easier to. It's the, the type of the culture, but the human nature, I think, it's, it's the same everywhere in the world. Uh, I am fond of Turkey, but that doesn't mean that I really I'm in love with Turkey. Uh, but. Uh, 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 I need it, in other way. It's maybe a, a pragmatic uh, answer, maybe, I don't know. But it's a complicated thing, of course. Uh, also, you love your uh, past, also. Uh, I'm, I'm fond of my past, that, uh, because without your past, you don't feel that you exist, you know. So, uh, it's a complicated, the many things. No, but thank you, I understand a little bit better. Yeah. Are there any um, questions or, or anybody want to mention something? Also about the film, for sure. No question? <laughs> All the women? The woman in your film? Yeah. Uh, there's two women in the series, yeah. so one seems to be an angel, yeah. and one seems to be a victim. <laughs> it's just coincidence, I think. Yeah, not, not a special purpose, yeah. I'm not against women. <laughs> I didn't say you are against women, but uh, it's uh, quite amazing for me. I mean, I don't know Anatolia at all. Yeah. Uh, so, is this the way people live there today? You know, the story takes place, I mean, th th this type of things, uh, normally there is no woman, you know, in a search. You know, 
uh, most of the uh, officers are generally uh, men, you know, just to be realistic. We had to select it like that. And I must say, of course, this story started from a real story. One of the scriptwriters, a, a doctor, a close friend of mine, told me this story, I mean, the base of the story, not everything, uh, in one dinner that uh, they searched a body till the morning. That was uh, the starting point for the story. Uh, in Turkey, the doctors has to make an obligatory social service in the uh, remote part of Turkey, in Anatolia, for about two years. So they, during these two years after the school, there is a huge responsibility on them. So they have to make a lot of autopsies and things like that suddenly after school. So they did really interesting things during that period. And uh, he used to tell me some of them. And, but this one, one day, uh, we thought we can, we can make a film out of it. Of course, we changed everything. We added everything. We wrote everything again. We changed the characters. We changed everything. And also, we have some quotations from Anton Chekhov stories as well. Filming and script writing is uh, not maybe for everyone, but for me it's kind of collage, you know. There are lots of things in your head, so the problem is bringing them together really uh, in a coherent and uh, integr integrity, I mean, uh, in a uh, harmonic way. Yeah. Yes, but <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, it's actually, you know, the drama has taken on a place. Mm -hmm. The crime has happened. Yeah. The story of the of, of, of the prosecutor and his wife has all that has all already taken place. And we see another story actually, and it's so many layers. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm the kind of director who tries to tell his stories through the details. Details uh, are so many, so much importance for me because, uh, you know, um, sometimes uh, 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 somebody from the family dies, for instance, you don't, you don't feel anything. But one day you, you see his uh, jacket in the, in the corner of one room and you suddenly feel the tragedy and you feel very sad. Uh, I think the, this kind of details uh, tells a lot to me in the life. Uh, and, uh, so I try to tell the story uh, by means of these uh, details. Uh, and uh, writing a script is uh, really a mystery for me. <laughs> I don't know how I, how I do it. Uh, at the beginning, it seems to be only hopeless. Uh, several months, and suddenly I find a script in front of me, and I, I don't really remember what happens between. Uh, uh, we work hard, of course, but you don't. See, I don't see anything. Uh, everything seems hopeless and uh, so complicated. But uh, you try to make them coherent and uh, mean something for you. Of course, I can answer. Uh, about every detail in my field. I mean, there is nothing arbitrary in that, but uh, of course, until you finish the film, you work on that. Really. Uh, I mean, in the script, it doesn't never finish. In the shooting, you change everything. You still search, and in the editing, it still goes on. <coughs> the writing part, I think about six months. So I'm not sure <laughs> about <coughs> Because you never know when did it starts. The starting point is unknown to me because 
maybe several months you think about it only, but you don't write anything. So it's hard to say. Okay, yes? Yes? Yeah, I wanted to ask how you work with the sound, the synchronization a lot, or how you, how you only work on sound uh, uh, montage? <coughs> sound uh, is, a, is a difficult uh, to answer, and I uh, <laughs> say everything. But, um, uh, in the shooting, I don't think a lot about the sound, actually, because it's something you can't, you can change, you can add, or you can really decide in the post-production. In the, in the shooting, I only want from the sound man uh, to shoot the dialogues good, but the rest of them, you really have to start thinking about it during the offline editing. Because uh, I begin to make the sound design during the uh, editing of the image, slowly, because it changes the feeling of the length of the shots. You have to add uh, arbitrarily, I mean, maybe not perfectly, but uh, you have to put them in their place to understand, to feel the, uh, the scene. And uh, after so I make a sound design myself during editing, actually. But after that, another two months for sound editing again, just concentrating on that. Uh, this time I worked with a French uh, sound editor, but I also worked with him here. Sound, I, um, I don't really try to be very realistic because in image maybe I try to be more realistic, but in sound I feel more free because in life I, I believe we select what to hear. There are lots of sound, but we just hear one thing in general. So you can apply that uh, also in the film. I generally isolate some sound in general. Are there more questions? Do you enjoy that process of shooting? Is shooting for you um, the, the core of the, the work? Um, I see that most of the shooting was done by night. Uh, was this a complicated shoot for you, or was it compared to your other films more easy? Night shooting, uh, of course, in the middle of the nowhere is, was difficult, but that's not important. The technical uh, difficulties is, doesn't mean anything really. Uh, the more difficult things is always to decide. You have to decide thousands of decisions you have to make during filmmaking, and it really tires you. I mean. The tiring things or being cold and uh, uh, the other things are really not so important. But your mind is really uh, getting tired because of the decisions. But of course, in terms of technically, if, if I take your question technically, uh, it's difficult, yes. Because um, it's dark, so you have to use the spotlights of the cars as the light source. So there's, uh, I tried to use the spotlights as a, in a certain choreography uh, because that, and we of, of course technically we had to do some modifications we had to change uh, the spotlights sometimes to make them stronger uh, then you put a generator in the car and it has a sound noise so it's it's it creates a, another difficulty of sound shooting and many things. But the main thing was, uh, of course, we needed a moonlight. And so moonlight for a, such a huge place was really difficult and expensive. Uh, so it, it should be high enough 
and we had to devise something with the special cranes. We had to put 25k of lights above, and it was not enough because it, uh, the lighting is not uniform. So you have to feed extra lights to, to the distance. Because uh, half of the film is in the dark, so without the moonlight, it would be only the heads in the darkness. It would be a bit uh, risky, uh, you know. Uh, so we wanted to use the feel of the countryside also, the monotonity of the countryside. What's about the storm in the night? <laughs> it's, it's another, of course, it's a, uh, of course, you know that uh, uh, you cannot wait for the start in the filmmaking. <laughs> you have to create it. Uh, so it was a storm machine. How do you, um, now we talked about the script and the sound and the night, uh, how do you work with your the image with your cameraman. I mean, I've seen a few of your films, and they're all extremely visual, and the colors are, um, it seems like they're, they're, they look natural, but they're extremely chosen of a piece of window, and uh, about the blues, and sometimes I also wonder if, it's, um, if you work, if you push the, the color in the post-production, or if it's very natural, because sometimes it's, it's quite uh, uh, stunning. And yeah, I just want to know how you work, do you work a lot with your camera or do you work, if you already have the images in your head, um, and you tell them what to do? Actually, the um, form, or let me say, the image is the easiest thing for me because I don't spend any energy on that. I leave it all my to my instincts, and uh, I don't think about it. So it's uh, I really don't know what I'm doing. I just go there and put the camera somewhere, all by instincts. So uh, I have a habit of uh, this, you know, but. Uh, I'm more concerned with the uh, uh, content, actually, in the shooting. And I trust my, uh, maybe, abilities about how to tell the story. Uh, I really uh, don't make plans. I never shoot, uh, say, uh, draw uh, pictures. Uh -huh. how, do you, how do you call it? Uh, uh, storyboard. Yeah, I never draw storyboards, for instance, because I, I prefer not knowing anything when I go to the set. Just playing, and when I contact with the uh, location, then I want to slowly decide where to put the camera and the extra things like that. With the actors, with the, all the... Because uh, my concentration really increases uh, at that moment with the actors, uh, with their uh, clothes, everything, etc and with the same atmosphere, everything. Then I decide. Uh, and, uh, but in this film, I tried, in, the, in terms of the colors, I tried to be as naturalistic as possible. I mean, I didn't really modify the colors at all. Uh, I tried to do it because uh, we shot it in the logarithmic camera, so it changed the colors a lot. So we, had to come back to the natural coloration. It was a bit difficult, actually, the color grade, just to get the natural look. Maybe we couldn't really succeed it, I'm not sure. Are there more questions? Okay. It's, it's not exactly a question, but I'd really like to hear you discuss a little bit. The, 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 the story of the film is in fact a skein or a, a weave of stories, many of them specific and, and laid out for us, and many of them just implied, such as 
the, the moment when the, the brother cries, I kill you, just shut up. And, and I'd really like to hear you discuss um, your feelings or your plannings between the specific and the implied in your creation of the story and your exposition of the story. It wasn't really a question so much as to, I would like if you could discuss your feelings between what's implicit and, and presented and what you imply um, as not so much backstory perhaps, but stories that we're only hearing hints of in your writing of the film or your preparing of the story. Because it's a whole bunch of stories around, within the big story. Every character is a story. And, uh, and, and some of them we, 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 we hint, and some of them we very much understand. I just wanted to hear if you had anything, and if you could discuss that a little bit. It's not a question per se. Yeah. Actually, of course, there is always a difference between your intentions and the result. Uh, but uh, you really begin to forget it uh, by the end of the film, when, when you finish it. Uh, sometimes uh, editing is like a music. You, know. you you search also for harmony only. I mean, uh, because you are all the time you are going from one harmony to another har harmony. You know, like in the music. Uh, so this should uh, so uh, many things together. You try to stick your intentions at the same time, but at the same time you search something else. Because sometimes it doesn't work. You see that what you plan doesn't work at all. So you have to find solutions all the time. So uh, sometimes you deceive yourself, I believe, uh, to, con to convince yourself that the new solutions is even better. Uh, sometimes you accept it as a reality, you know. Uh, so, uh, filmmaking, I think, is one of the most difficult things that you really can succeed your intentions. If you are writing a novel, you change the words, but you cannot go back to uh, filmmaking, fi uh, filming, you know. It's what you should is what you have in the editing. So, uh, sometimes you feel that I wish I should, I had to shoot something like this, but it's not there, so you have to find another solution. So it's a very complicated process, uh, but I think uh, the, uh, at the end of the day, you have to be uh, realistic, uh, because you have the materials. So because of this fact, I try to shoot lots of alternatives. And I think the digital filmmaking is one of the best sides of the digital filmmaking. Is uh, this. You can, without spending lots of money, without really increasing the budget, you can shoot alternatives. So uh, sometimes I find myself shooting just the opposite of my intention. <coughs> because editing is a miracle, you know. Sometimes just the opposite of your intentions works much better and it's much deeper, you realize it. So this experience of my past makes me shoot a lot in the uh, shooting. Because, uh, you know, uh, at the end, uh, we really doesn't know. It's the most uh, biggest mystery, is the human nature. So it's, uh, you never know. Uh, uh, what you plan in the uh, uh, in the table and you write this script really surprises you a lot sometimes when you it. How could you I think that <coughs> this, this is silly you say most of the time sometimes. So um, editing is extremely important for me because that's the only time, only place you really have time to think about uh, and uh, you to find a real balance on the field. 
you just should think because it, there's a time restriction as well. Uh, you have to decide quickly many things. So in, instead of deciding, uh, shooting alternatives is better. Right? Uh, when you're shooting uh, alternatives, on on the set, is your uh, the period when you're shooting when you're uh, outdoors is that getting longer then? Is that getting longer? So uh, make, um, does it take more time? Ah yeah. yes, yes, of course. But uh, uh, I think if if your crew is not so crowded, it's easier, of course. This time it was about quite crowded, well, about 70 people behind the camera. So it was, you, you, are, you begin to think that you know, every day is really a great amount of money. So I had to uh, be quicker, but still uh, I uh, like to spend time on shooting. Just at the end, uh, for, but uh, you know, my film, I, I shoot films not so long actually. This film about two and a half months of shooting, but because of that, I prepared better this time because of that risk. But in my previous films, the shoot crew was small. In that case, you can spend more time on the shooting. So the alternatives you you are planning already in the in the uh, beginning. You're not improvising on. Yes, if I find ideas, of course I plan, but. Always you find new ideas in the shooting. You cannot stop it. Because with the reality of the shooting, you, s you begin to see some new realities, always. Because what you wrote doesn't fit to your actor. What did you do? You have to change something. Thank you. One last question, maybe. Try to make sure, of course. What, what else can you do? Like the painter, when does the paint, painting finish? It's hard to uh, be sure. But uh, if you have time, of course, it's easier with time because it's settled, settled more. But sometimes there are deadlines, <laughs> which I, I don't like. But, uh, you have to quick sometimes. It's the reality of it. because the film business is really dependent on the money also. That's uh, of course I want to be as much as free of that, but that's a reality at the end of the day. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. Chen. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.